Because Spain is tightening its rules on property and how banks account for it. That as the housing bubble bursts and property prices crash. Europa Press telling us the lenders will now have to put away reserves worth 30% of all their properties' value. Yeah, Spain has been laid low by the real estate bust and with home sales falling by half, it's hard to find ways to offload any houses nowadays. Jason Harris reports from Madrid. Is the Spanish housing market recovering? It doesn't look very much like it. At the residential outlet fair in Madrid, Real estate firms, and developers and banks' real estate branches have come together for the second time in a year to try to get rid of their unsold properties. They offer discounts of up to 50%, payment facilities, extra guarantees. Yet, they're far from being any bargain. The real estate market is not homogenic. Uh, in Madrid, I think uh, the, the, the sales can recover in two years. Mm -hmm but perhaps in the coast, in, in five. Hmm? Prices have dropped mostly in coastal and peripheral areas, where demand has visibly dropped. Last year, Spanish property transactions were down by more than 40%. Currently in Spain, there are 610,000 new homes unsold and 520,000 second-hand homes with the for sale sign outside. Sergio, a house buyer would like to buy a two-room flat in the city center of Madrid. Well, it would be great if we could find something about 350,000, but you have to search with, well, with a lot of patience and, and very carefully. Some of the former big names in Spain's construction boom, like Martín Safadesa, which had to file for protection from accreditors last year, are missing here and they may never see the good times of the past again. Jason Harris, Bloomberg News, Madrid. While well, Spain speaks of a property glut, it's a different story on this side of the Bay of Biscay as the chairman of one of Britain's biggest house builders is calling for action on the country's housing shortage. Yeah, we're talking about Red Rose, uh, Steve Morgan. He says the situation is getting so bad that it could even lead to social un unrest. He says there's massive penthouse demand for home ownership in Britain, but a lack of affordable property and difficulty in getting a mortgage means huge hurdles for people wanting to step onto the property ladder. He's pleading for the British government to help ease the market by releasing some of its holdings of land or indeed by encouraging banks to sell some of the land that they have taken on. Well, to discuss this some more, we're joined now by Peter Cosmetatos, Director of Finance Policy at the British Property Federation. So what do you make of what we just heard there, that there is a huge shortage of housing here in the UK that could lead to social unrest? Are those concerns justified? Well, it's difficult to speculate about social unrest, but there's certainly a shortage of housing. Um, the real problem, I think, is that while the government had set very ambitious targets for a lot of house building, um, last year, 2009, saw the lowest volume of new housing since the Second World War. So there really is a shortage and the government definitely needs to start looking at more imaginative solutions for addressing it. And how should they address it? Well, one of the things that we'd very much like to see is the government encouraging large-scale investment in the residential rental market. Um, there's an enormous amount of demand potentially at least, from the institutions, from pension funds and insurance companies in residential. It offers a very good, secure income stream, which is a good hedge against inflation. Um, the trouble is that the economics need a little bit of support from government, certainly to kick-start the sector. And one of the things that we'd very much like to see is a, is a stamp duty relief to encourage large-scale large purchases of housing stock um, so that we're not reliant entirely on people being able to buy to let um, Given, given the constraints that we now see in the mortgage market for such buyers. How does the commercial side stack up next to the residential property market? They're very different. They're very different. I mean, the, the commercial market last year was a, a year of very, very acute difference in the two halves. The first half was disastrous, and the second half was an amazing recovery. Um, so we're seeing that in the results of companies like Hammerson today. We're seeing them come in pretty well with a, with a pretty small drop in overall value last year because the second half of the year recovered almost everything that was lost in the first half. So on, on the commercial side, it, it looks pretty solid. But, you know, when, when do we actually uh, see a topping out in terms of uh, this residential market as well, as well? I mean, when do we see the residential market actually playing catch up in terms of what's going on? I think it's very difficult to say, and I, and I think it's probably saying too much to say that the commercial market's fine. Um, it isn't. It's very, it's very mixed. We've got a very strong prime sector with 
really good new London offices and London retail doing very well, certain other regions as well. But there's an enormous amount of property out there with a lot of bank debt secured on it um, where demand really hasn't recovered and we're going to be highly dependent on what happens with the, with, with the, the economy as a whole. And I think the housing market is going to be dependent on what happens in the economy as a whole as well. So from what you're saying, London's commercial real estate market seems to have rebounded. Where is the demand coming from? There's, there's a lot of demand from the investor side um, in terms of overseas money, institutional money, principally for the high end where you've got low risk and pretty good returns compared to what you can get on cash um, at the moment and certain other uh, of the traditional asset classes. We've also got a lot of demand from the occupier side, but again, for the high end. So the, the prime part of the market, there's a lot of demand for and it's looking quite healthy at the moment. Very quickly, Peter, what about the banks? When did they actually start selling some of these assets off uh, in order to, to recoup the losses? I, I, I think they will be starting to sell now. I think last year they were very much taking stock of where they are and what their exposure is. They are looking to sell now. But I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out, slow process. We're not going to see the market flooded with a lot of assets. I think it's going to take a long time. And, and again, the government needs to be quite creative and quite imaginative to help. For example, the REIT sector, which has shown itself so resilient and robust through the recession, to continue to help. Peter Cosmetatos, we appreciate your analysis. Thanks. Thank you. Right, well, uh, fast approaching at the open, about, what, uh, just about a quarter of an hour away from that. Time for a quick break. But one